Hey boys and girls, I had this idea I was just thinking and I've got like all like a complete horde of computer parts that I'm just uh, probably going to end up selling or junking or recycling. Before I do that, I'm going to take the best of the best, which is still junk, and then try and make like an older just junk machine, which of course I've done before, but why not do it again? Found on that, I could probably uh, maybe get some more RAM out of that and then maybe use that case because I do like the small, the smaller form factor. And then off to the horde. I got that case up. That one's really cool. It's an old server. Uh, I think it's made by Acer, but it's like really old. It's like AMD. It's well, it's, they are dual Xeons, but they're dual Xeons from like 2004. Then I've got this case I can use probably, which is an old Cooler Master. That one's a little bit more stylish. I'll probably end up using that case, even though it weighs like 50 pounds. Is like all aluminum. Nice case. I'm not sure if there's power supply in there, but I do have spare power supplies around here somewhere. And as for video, I don't know, I think I got a 79, I think my best one here is a 7950 GT, so nothing special, I could probably use that or find something else, and then I have hard drives, alright, and when I did that, I did like a buyout, or I bought a bunch of stuff from like a corporate buyout, and they gave me just a ton of old hard drives, so there are a few in here that are like 750 gig and a couple one terabytes I could probably use. I might even have a spare SSD. So there's more drives in there. But a lot of them are junk, so I have to go through and figure out which ones are which. I got keyboards. And more video cards. Those are like older ones, so. And RAM. I got RAM here. So probably going to be doing like two. Oh, I got some decent stuff. I'm like, I'll be doing like DDR2, so I'll probably try and max that out. Try and do 8 gigs. And just see what's possible. And then I've got enough fans down there, so if I do want to overclock anything, I've got plenty of fans. A lot of those fans are actually off of uh, server cases, too. So they're really noisy and really fast. You can slow them down. Yes. Oh, here's my power supplies. So I do think I have a modular 500. I think that one is, yeah. That one should be good. I might have something else that's a little bit more, has some more wattage to it, like a 550 or 600. And as for motherboards, excuse the mess, I've been out here trying to find Chris's decorations. Okay, for a motherboard, I got, these are all pretty old, but I'm gonna have to pick through those and see what's the best. And then slap them all in whatever case I decide on. I'm thinking the silver one, just because it's, It'll bring in more value at the end of the day if I do want to sell it. But also, it would be interesting to rip apart that server on the right and build something into that. Look at this little guy. He's chewing away. What's he got there? An acorn? He got something. Yep, yeah, so I'm going to be using this case and I'm going to also benchmark here in this system, uh, which I'm using a 3D mark. So I'm going to figure out uh, with the parts I put together which is going to be faster after I move everything over from that case for actually like three cases into one. This is with uh, I think the 2 gig normal card which is just like a basic tier. <laughs> you, you don't want to use it even though it's 2 gigs. It sucks. This is also using a mechanical drive. I do have an SSD I can slap in here. I think I pulled that out of a laptop I had. And that should really help these speeds. Yeah, so we're just going to give up on this and move on. Alright, I tried. Oh, at least I made it festive. This is the old one. I'm going to just gut out and do what I can do. Thought I'd just do this while I'm tearing it down. Let's go. Oh, and now this, inside this case, which I was going to use, of course, um, has a AM3 
motherboard into it. So that's actually a good motherboard. All right, so the existing motherboard in here seems to be an ASRock 970 Extreme. So it's an AM3, and I'm dealing with AM2, I believe, but oh well. I don't have a CPU for this, and I don't think I have spare RAM, so we're going to go back in time and just clean everything up. I'm also using, like, three computers. So there's, there's parts coming from, like, all, all over the house here to go into this one machine, and hopefully we can actually make something that runs. Clean that out, and we'll be at least getting this motherboard out of here and the power supply to go in. This one does have three fans. I think they are all LEDs. Ooh, it is a bit dusty in there. All right, let's get to it. This case is gonna be really hard to modify any kind of cable management just because it's older, but it does have a little bit of space behind there on the back plate, and it is ATX, so I can just stuff a ton of stuff in here, and it should work out. Let's get this motherboard out. And because I think this motherboard does still actually work, I'm going to keep the back plate and just tape it on there. And then when I put it away, it'll be there when I want to put it in a new computer. I just need a CPU and good to go. Of course, now I'm just going to do the same thing on this smaller computer and take out, you know, just all the screws, motherboard screws if you're new to this, and just like the ones on the back. They're actually labeled if you look in your motherboard uh, instructions. So they are the little tiny ones and just put them off to the side. And first things first, we got to get everything out here. So we get the drives, cables unplugged, all that Christmas light stuff I put in there for no good reason. But we do have two, or we do have four RAM slots on this motherboard, which isn't that uncommon, but uh, it's going to be beneficial here because this is only a DDR2 RAM. And I think I, I don't have any 4 gig sticks, but I do, I may be able to pull off 4 2 gig sticks. It'll give me 8 gigs of RAM, and that with an SSD, which I have here, and the either a 750 or a 1 terabyte hard drive. It'll be okay for, I don't know, basic gaming, maybe like retro games and stuff. Other than that, it's good to go. Let's move it on over, take this out first. Sure, yeah. Keep an eye on the I.O., the front I.O. You want to make sure you know which one's going where. This one's all color-coded, so it should be super simple. But that case here on this one, oh my goodness. This one's not color-coded, but it should just have everything written on the board. So this will be the uh, front I.O. easy enough. Although, yeah, you can tell the age of this case. Oh my goodness. It doesn't have anything like that on this one. Oh no, I guess they're both old. That one's blue, but that one just goes to a USB splitter. This is a video card I was talking about. It's basically like a budget, uh, fanless, I don't know what it is, GT610. So it's not very fast. Although it is to 2 gigabyte, I don't know what it's doing with those 2, gig <laughs> two gigabytes of RAM because uh, you cannot game on this whatsoever. You could try. And just like that, we got the motherboard out. It's even got some parallel cables on it. All right, I can use that for a uh, DVD-ROM or something. And now I'm gonna wanna push out this back plate and move this back plate onto this pewter over here. Making sure that the keyboard part goes upwards. And I forget, these go on from the inside. This might be a two-handed job. Please excuse the bum gloves. It's winter in here and this house is very chilly. Now we're just going to move over the other motherboard, put it in here, line it up. Where is that other motherboard? Oh, might be time to actually clean out this fan right now too. And uh, I'll wait till it's in the case. I can put more thermal compound on it just in case I want to overclock this. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the overclocking, but uh, it might be an option. Oh look, I don't even need the uh, this side. Uh, Parallel port here, or this old cable. This one actually has for the CD-ROM. It does have SATA connections. Okay, it's also got top panel, USB, FireWire, uh, front panel too, I believe. Oh, it's even got a card reader. Sweet. All right, I didn't know I had all this stuff on it still. Just getting this into light here. I've noticed that these fans are actually quite dirty. I'm probably gonna have to take all this apart and use rubbing alcohol on the inside. Uh, not a big deal. I'm used to that, but for now, let's just get it together. 
Of course, as I saw, I put these uh, back panel in actually backwards at first. So, note to self, look closer next time. These, of course, are your fan headers. Hook that up. And the front panel, I guess it's a top panel for USB. And then we've got, that's all my front panel mess. Right there. Screws go in. I've got all the front panel stuff hooked up and the top panel as well and the power switch and all that. So that was pretty easy. Just, you know, match the uh, down here where it says HDD and all that fun stuff. The corresponding thing is going to be on your cables right there. And it doesn't matter which way you put them, uh, you know, just as long as they line up with the two holes, they can go up or down. Everything else, the, this does have actually some cable management that I'm I did manage to hide all this stuff that comes down here and comes down to there, but still not perfect. And this, this whole motherboard only has like two fan headers, I think three, if you include the CPU. So that sucks. I'm going to have to get like an adapter so I can use these on like a Molex or something. Speaking of Molex, I should probably put the power supply in now. <laughs> all right. This one actually has because at the back of the case, I guess they tried to slim it down or something, so there's like an adapter plate. So this goes on the back, and you have to take that off before you can even string the power supply through. Kind of a pain in the ass, but this one is modular, so in theory, that would make things series easier, but not exactly taking off all of the cables to make it any easier, am I? No, I'm just doing it my way. The management be damned. It's just a little bit weird with that adapter. I'll show you. This adapter sits on the back until these screws go into the case and that and goes into the power supply. So unless you have like a gigantic power supply, it's going to sit near recessed just a little bit. So Cooler Master, make, you make some weird cases. Anyways. Because um, that's a full-size power supply. Why would it do that? <laughs> Alright, moving on. Now with the modular power supply, you don't have to use all the cables you don't need, right? So on this one, I've got a bunch of like six pins and four pins I don't need because I'm, I'm going to need a six pin for a video card. But there's no four pin on or this motherboard for an additional slot that I can see. So I can probably just remove that entire cable, get that out of the way, less mess. Now I've got the back panel off. You can see how it's kind of recessed here, so I could probably do the uh, cable management even better now, but I've got it off because I want to put a drive in. So I'm going to figure out where a drive is going to fit, not interfere with the video cards. Probably down low. What size of SATA cable I'm going to need to reach it. This one's obviously very, very short, so I can go from like here to there and only use that much of a cable. That would be nice. And the reason I had both sides off the case is because this is a mechanical drive and you want that tightening in by both sides. So I've got nut there, or screw there, screw there. And this thing is nice and tightened down because you don't want it wobbling. As for an SSD, you can pretty much stick that anywhere. You could stick that right here if you wanted with a piece of tape. It wouldn't matter because they have no moving parts. But I didn't get this, so I got the small cable in there. So there's like hardly any extra... Uh, baggage in there that's pretty much the right size cable I'm not gonna worry about colors because we've got the whole rainbow of everything just thanks to uh, I don't know 10 year old tech oh I goofed it did need one actual 8 pin onto the motherboard which is fairly common I was kind of I was weirded out like why does it not have a 4 pin or even a 6 pin or 8 pin uh, dual connection to the motherboard so that's done and I put that card on there just for testing. The SSD is in, the back panel is on. Uh, it's ready to go. I could fire this up right now, I think. I do want to clean it up and I'm a little worried that the only fan running is like one of the back fans. So I'm gonna have to get an adapter and I can run the front fan and the back fans. Or just even change the fan. Like what is up with these colors, man? <laughs> just sickens me. For a little bit more dust free, I did put in a bunch of these covers. At the back, they don't all match, but man, it's uh, this is like a ghetto build. What can you say? I'm ghetto all the way. But it's coming. It's probably going to be worth more money in parts than actual action, but you can always just swap the motherboard. And I do, I'm 
tempted to try some ECC, ECC RAM like out of a server because then I could go up to like 12 gigs or something but then there's no overclocking of the RAM whatsoever and that's even if it works huh but right now I'm tempted to just push a button and see what happens I'm gonna look online and see if I can't find any deals on like a cheap video card I'm not sure what would fit in here for the price but we can probably find some so I've been looking through uh, UCA also Amazon just for what it can find for a video card that's going to be like affordable because you know that thing is not worth dumping a lot of money into and on Amazon everything under a hundred bucks uh, pretty much what it already has I found a few others I found this well I'll get into that a bit I found this too which is um, 125 bucks for a GTX 7060 which is a pretty good card uh, we've got a 5770 for 60 bucks. That's more kind of in my budget. That's one gigabyte uh, DDR5. But for 60 bucks, probably get them down to like 50, 40. The 5850 for 100. Oh, that's tempting too. Get him down maybe 80. I don't know. And then this. This is what I really want. <laughs> There's a GTX and GeForce 960. This is only the. Uh, 2 gigabyte version, but it's also the WinForce version. This would be awesome, and he's looking for trades for old hardware. So I'm going to message this guy and to see, like, what's up, like, like, retro computer hardware. Maybe he needs, like, retro computer parts, or, like, I have a Dreamcast. I got a Genesis. I got other stuff. Game Boy stuff. But maybe I get that price way down. Because 130 that's still a good price. Like, I'll pay him a cash, but uh, I'd rather, hmm, I'd rather go cheap on this. I'm probably just going to use a card I already have, but for the 130 bucks, good deal. He's going to get you. Dreamcast, what? And it works. I should probably get back to the computer sometime. But Tony Hawk is pretty cool too. And I beat the game, I guess. Alright, Ben Kitty. Do you think we're gonna fire this up? I haven't really changed anything, but I do have these other two cards here that I'm hoping will work. I don't know. It's uh well, this is honestly my first attempt at booting this. I have not done this before. So we've got a blue light. Do we have post? We got post, alright, 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 okay. Now we're just gonna make sure this, apparently even the DVD ROM works. And it just shut off. Oh crap. Alright, back to the drawing board. I'll see what's wrong here. I just changed a few things around here just to make sure it wasn't like a weird peripheral hardware problem or whatever. Oh, looks like it's doing updates or something. And we have Windows Functional. Do we have a mouse? We have a mouse. Okay, do we have Wi-Fi? I think we've got everything going here. Alright, groovy. Move on. Job all done. Okay. So now we can start tweaking. I think the motherboard was overclocked just a little bit originally, so I'm going to probably back that off and then go back up. I don't know, once I get a video card. I still haven't heard back from, well, heard back from a couple of those guys, and one wants to trade a Dreamcast that I have. Possibly. Uh, if he likes it. So I've got it out here. He'll probably come take a look. I got some games. I got two controllers and this is like the old sports edition. So it's probably not worth much, but if I can get like a a 960 2 gig, then like that's a pretty good card. That would uh, run just about any new game right now at 1080p just about fine. So uh, if that works out, that would be just amazing. But if it doesn't work out, then I can maybe try one of these cars. That's an ATI All-in-Wonder, and that's like a 7950 or something. Both uh, about 1 gig or less. Oh yeah, I think they're even less. But either way, uh, we should be going strong. I'm going to rip some DVDs on here just to make sure everything works. Okay, so I kind of set this up to rip some DVDs. I'm not sure if it's just because of the DVDs or what, but... It's much slower. We'll wait till we get to the render process, but right now, I think that this ROM is crap. Otherwise, it's working just great. 
Look at this. We can have like a first white Christmas in forever. Uh, it's just a couple days away. Oh, so much Christmas. <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd decorate it up just for the occasion. I think the problem here is a video card. Honestly, I was uh, doing this without any kind of like video card at all. And it was actually rendering faster than what this is doing. Right now, so we can see that it's taking half an hour, roughly, to render. Um, oh, look, there's a Benman. I've been uh, just doing these in like 40p, fine enough for uh, Cody or whatever. And average is less than this, so we've actually lost some speed by upgrading parts. Uh, let's change a video card, I think. I don't like that one. Pretty quiet, at least. Let me just pull this thing out. First up, let's try this one. Seventy-nine fifty, and we'll pop that in and see what happens. This did require the actual uh, six or yeah six pin connection that was still left on. Other than that, I don't think it's gonna post. Eee, that sucks. That was probably the best card I had. That is, you know, like basically free. So this don't work. Come on, baby. No, it's not posting whatsoever. Okay, we'll move on to the next one, which is, whoa, the ATA All in Wonder, the TV card of your dreams. It's working. It was working. All right, so I was using like the latest drivers on the uh, the other one, the other cards, and that didn't help. So right now I'm going to update this driver right here, which I highly doubt is installed. Nope. We'll check and see, and I don't think we'll see a driver. No. Updates. Updates. More updates. Okay, I kind of cut away there for a bit. That Those updates took literally, uh, I don't know, multiple hours because it was the uh, autumn Windows 10 update. So it took most of the night. Now with the other the other uh, video cards, say not the two gigabyte one, this one's only, I think, like 256 megabyte or whatever. It's taking almost half the time to rip a DVD. I know this isn't like game performance, but maybe we'll try uh, 3D Mark again and just see see what the score is even though it doesn't really matter because it crashed last time but whatever computer's running all right back to this machine let's see if we can actually run 3d mark if it doesn't crash then we got a thumbs up because i think i am still overclocked oh here she goes i'll get back to you if it runs if it actually works that'd be awesome because i mean compared to some other cards i mean it's working this time that's pretty cool all of like, oh, 11 frames per second. But this card is old, very old. So in some real world gaming, uh, this will probably do okay. And we have results, oh my goodness, how is this possible? 2032, a validation warning. I don't know what that means, but uh, let's compare results. Let's see what we got. Looks like average is about, uh, graphics score of 10 frames per second. Awesome. Okay, so if I was playing like more retro games, I'm sure it would be a lot better and just like, or even just like light games. This is all an ATI Radeon HD 3600 on a Phenom X3 XE or 8600. Oh no, it has 512 megabytes of RAM. I was wrong. Better than 6% of all results, so that's pretty good. Not really, but. Better than six. 
So I've actually got it just a few days later, of course. I actually filmed this to be out around uh, Christmas time, which obviously didn't happen. It's a fair bit after Christmas. But I've got it all set up here. I did not get the video card. I'm still looking for a cheap video card. But the one that's in here surprisingly works really well. This monitor doesn't do it justice. This monitor is kind of old and the colors are all blown out. But for what it did from parts that were just hanging around here, this thing is, you know, it's not smoking fast, but it's fast, fast. It's nice and quiet. Everything works. No crashing. I'm happy. I'll probably sell this thing for cheap, just for someone who needs it. Casual use, they can slap a video card into it if they want to game. You can game, like you play like CSGO or something like that. Maybe, you know, some e-titles that are just like, don't use a lot of resources or whatever. This doesn't cost me a penny. This is just old stuff that I just recycled. And it looks pretty damn cool. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. This was like one of my longest videos ever. I apologize for that, even though I did edit it down quite a bit. It's gonna take a while to upload. Thanks again. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, then uh, give it a thumbs up anyway. <laughs> Cheers guys. Keep on rocking.